In Activity 1, Simple Circuits, students are introduced to simple electrical circuits. They first discuss and define the parts of a circuit, and then construct and test different simple circuit designs. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 1, a D-cell battery, number 48 flashlight bulb, a roll of insulated copper wire, and wire cutters. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 1 for each student. Divide the class into teams of two. Each team of two will need one battery, one bulb, and a piece of wire. Instruct each team to use the wire cutters to cut a 15 centimeter piece of insulated copper wire and strip the insulation from the ends of the wire pieces. To begin the activity, hold up a battery, wire, and bulb. Ask students, how do you think these materials could be arranged to make the bulb glow? Encourage students to brainstorm different arrangements of these materials. Then, explain that in this activity, students will create and test different ways to make the bulb glow. Inform the class that a battery holds chemicals that react with each other, which causes electrons or tiny bits of charged matter to move. Most of the electrons accumulate at one end of the battery, leaving the other end with far fewer electrons. Then, introduce electricity as the interaction of electrons and other electrically charged particles. Help students understand that if there is a pathway from one end of the battery to the other, electrons will flow between the two ends. This flow of electrons is called an electric current, or electric charge, and provides the energy needed to make the bulb glow. Inform the class that electrical energy can power radios, flashlights, and even toys. Then, reinforce that electrical energy is the energy provided by an electric current. Guide students to realize that batteries only store energy and that a pathway, such as a wire, is required for the electrons to flow. Therefore, for electricity to occur, a set of electrical elements called a circuit must be connected. The elements of a circuit often include a battery, wires, and a light bulb or other receiver. Next, distribute Activity Sheet 1 and instruct students to draw three circuits that they predict will light the bulb on their Activity Sheet. Distribute the materials and tell students to build and test the arrangements they drew. Then circle which of the circuits caused the bulb to glow. Ask students, what are the parts of the circuit? Students may identify the battery, wire, and bulb. Then ask, does the order in which the circuit parts are connected matter? Help students understand that to make the bulb glow, the current must be able to flow from one end of the battery through the bulb and back to the other end of the battery. Instruct students to record their observations by completing questions 2 and 3 on their activity sheets. Next, explain that a closed circuit is a circuit in which all parts are connected so that the current is able to flow from one end of the battery to the other. Guide students to realize that if a current passes through the bulb, the bulb will glow. However, if the bulb is not located within the current loop, the bulb will not glow. Then, introduce the term open circuit as a circuit in which the path is not connected and the current can't flow from one end of the battery to the other. Reinforce that in an open circuit, the bulb does not glow. Next, instruct students to reconstruct circuit A, as shown on their activity sheets. Ask students, what happens when you pull the wire away from one of the elements? Is it now an open or closed circuit? Students should see that the path of the current has been interrupted, so the bulb does not glow, and that this circuit is now an open circuit. Finally, inform students that in the next activity, Electrical Symbols, they will learn to identify parts of the circuit using symbols. To conclude the activity, have students return all batteries, bulbs, and wires to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.